Hi, everyone. Uh, I am Janis Verdelis. I'm founder of Flexi. And uh, so uh, I'm glad we had a, a mention of keyboards and text input in the keynote uh, as an experience that really sucks on mobile. That's what motivates us uh, every day. So uh, we started Flexi really to solve that problem and make typing a pleasure rather than a chore on mobile and touchscreen devices. And we've built a technology that lets you basically type on a touchscreen so easily that you don't even have to look at the screen while you're doing it. And um, since somebody gave a demo, a live demo earlier, I'm going to do the same. It's probably the best way to do it. I'm going to type a sentence without looking and make sure I don't sit here. Uh, and I've made it speak so you can hear what I'm doing. Thank you. So as you've seen, I, I did that with, totally without looking. You know, the, the use case is not necessarily that I'm going to be looking at the sky and uh, texting, but uh, just like on a laptop, you don't have to stare at the keyboard 100% of your time with 100% of your concentration in order to type a simple message. That's what we're trying to bring to the touchscreen environment uh, across a range of touchscreen devices. Uh, and the difference in the approach from all your other autocorrect systems that you probably already use is we looked at autocorrect systems and what they normally tend to do is they look at the letters or the buttons that you press on the screen and then they try to figure out which ones you pressed wrong. So if you get you know, your normal iPhone, if you get 80% of your word right, it might be able to correct the other 20%. But the thing is, if I'm typing really fast, then I may get 80% of the word wrong or indeed the whole, every, every letter wrong. It is very plausible that I do that, and autocorrect systems typically fail in these cases. Instead of looking at the letters, we take advantage of uh, the fact that we have a touch screen, and we look at your input at a deeper level. We look at where you press on the screen, how you pressed, where you normally press, uh, where others normally press, what's the context of your sentence. We do a deeper analysis of your input such that if you write BDJKP, uh, we understand that, that what you meant to type is the word hello. And if you look at the keyboard, um, you will see that that's actually quite close to the word hello. We started two years ago peculiarly as an app for iOS, which uh, keyboard technologies hadn't done before. Uh, we were an application for blind and visually impaired users uh, to type on an iPhone. Today we have hundreds of thousands of uh, people in this community using Flexi to type every day. So when I say you can type without looking, I know that's the case. Uh, and. Uh, um, and we started on that platform, uh, we started two years ago, we launched that one year ago on iOS, uh, we've had a lot of recognition, we were uh, best of App Store uh, last year by Apple, uh, one of the best of App Store apps, uh, a number of other awards, uh, and really we've spent a lot of the last uh, months getting the technology to be ready to work across different platforms and across different markets, not just the accessibility market. One of the things we have also announced and we're going to be doing later this year is to provide our keyboard as an SDK so that other application developers on the iOS ecosystem can use our text input solution. And with that would be the first time a keyboard company enters the iOS market uh, ever. Um, We've always tried to innovate in different device classes and very excited about wearable technology. Uh, if, uh, if you think typing is broken on a smartphone, imagine how bad it is normally on a smartwatch. Uh, uh, we, we've built uh, our technology to work on smartwatches. Uh, I've got demos here if you want to see it, but you can type pretty nicely even on a, the screen of a watch. Uh, and on devices like leap motion and gesture-based systems and three-dimensional systems, which we think uh, will become more popular in the future. And actually, we are the first uh, investment made by uh, the leap fund, um, and we've done a lot of work with these guys. Uh, so we've tried to make typing easier, not just in terms of the typing experience, but in terms of the user interface as well. We don't require the user to learn anything new. It's QWERTY-based. Uh, you tap type just like you normally do, and we take care of the rest. Uh, but we also have a number of gestures that could uh, make typing even easier if you want to learn them, though they're not required. Um, and we had a limit on five slides, and I think I'm just on time. So um, ready for questions. All right, so do users need to be trained in order to use the keyboard without looking, or is that? You, you know, you understand what I'm asking for. 
I guess I don't. <laughs> so uh, this experience that I've just demonstrated is how it comes out of the box. Uh, that's why blind people can use it. Uh, of course, over time, it also adjusts to you and it will get better based on the sentences that you most typically type, the words that you most typically use, and also uh, it, it tailors to where you press the screen. So, for example, I've noticed that in my uh, keyboard map internally, I, in my mind, V is a bit to the right of where it actually really is on the keyboard. And it will pick this up over time and get better. But being able to type even without looking, I'll, so basically, uh, orders of, of magnitude better or more accurate than your current keyboard should be right outside the box before you even train it. Can you comment on comparison with say Braille Touch and Android Talk? How does this compare with other similar apps? No, two specific ones. So I had oh. a student do a study last year on smartphone interface for the visually impaired in India, which has the largest such population. And we studied these two items. But I didn't know about yours at that time. So I have some specific data as well. Bra Braille Touch and, uh, and, and Android Talkback were the two. So uh, this focus specifically on the accessibility community. Uh, Braille Touch is probably the second most popular after hours uh, in, uh, on the iOS ecosystem for the accessibi accessibility community. Um, we have tried to focus on a technology that is more universal than accessible. So instead of uh, building something that works with Braille, for example, which would be good for the accessibility community, we based it on QWERTY. So the learnings we get from the accessibility community apply, uh, apply globally. Similarly with TalkBack. Uh, you know, which one is faster in terms of word per minute if you are blind uh, specifically? I can tell you we unofficially have the world record with Flexi, uh, and we're working on an official attempt. Uh, so. We have a question? Oh. Uh, do, you, do you support QWERTY only right now? Do you support Azerty or other keyboard inputs? Yeah, right. Very good question. So we support, uh, it, so long as it's touch type based, whether it's QWERTY, Azerty, QWERTS, or anything else, the Greek keyboards, I'm from Greece, it doesn't really matter for the technology. We support the layout that, uh, that is uh, supported by its language. So for French, it would be Azerty, for example. I'm sorry, can you say that loud? How, 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 how many downloads? How many downloads? On iOS, around 300,000. Um, on uh, Google Play, we are in uh, closed beta with just over 30,000 users. I think 35,000 now, but it's closed beta. It's very much a testing, not, not launched yet. I, I, we can't take any more questions from the audience at this time. We need to confine this just to our judges. Um, thank you for your enthusiasm. All right, thank you.